So here we are with another episode of our International Trade Legends podcast show. And I'm super excited to have Misha on, or probably, as he's better known, Winnie Designs. He's one of the people that I sort of follow on social media, like probably one of the largest followings on social media. I think he's about three and a half million across all social channels. You'll probably correct me on there. Um, but, you know, half a million on, I think, Insta, 2.7-ish, I think. Am I right on TikTok? So a bit of a TikTok sensation as well, which is, you know, it's crazy, the figures and the numbers, but we'll get into that a bit later. But basically, really well known across social, some great videos that you do, tips and tricks, loads of like cool, neat stuff that just helps not even the trade professionals, but Mr. You know, and Mr. and Mrs. DIYers themselves, people that like to do things themselves. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. And I really want to just talk to you about how you came to be where you are now and the progression from sort of, did you get into the trades at a young age? Was it family or friends that got you into that? And just just talk us through the process of how you came to be sort of the Winnie designs that everybody sees across social media now. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, and thanks for having me on. Um, so, I got into the trades when I moved from Ukraine to United States. So when we moved, um, just whatever we had in our pockets, essentially, you know, it, it's very expensive to immigrate to United States, especially four kid, four kids, and it was four of us. Um, so that on its own was a, a task, essentially. So when we got here, um, just basically had to start from nothing. Our family. And um, how old were you when when you moved? I was 12. I was 12 years old. We, we moved uh, that summer when I was 2006. We moved here in 2006 um, from Ukraine. And then w- once we got here, it was one of those things where everybody just went to work. Ukrainians are just hardworking people and they, they just grind. And, you know, we see my parents working and uh, my dad was a carpenter. My mom was a cleaning lady and um, my brothers and I, we saw how hard they were working. We couldn't ask them for like, hey, can I have some money for a computer or hey, can I have some money for you know a phone or or whatever, new soccer shoes? You know, like we couldn't ask for money because it was just almost uh, it felt uncomfortable because we saw how hard they were working for that money. So then we got into the trades, essentially. I mean, I was literally 13 years old. I was kind of a bigger kid. Um, so I was uh, 13 years old when we um, kind of got into the trades and more on the in- interior painting side of it, where we knew a bunch of Ukrainians who were able to just get us to work. And they were happy to have young guys, um, you know, kind of working on the weekends and uh, working on the, our holidays. So that's kind of how that started. And then once I got into high school, Again, like on my weekends and my holidays and summer break, that's three months, um, I started to do framing and more of um, carpentry work. And I really like that. Um, framing, especially in the United States, I know like in England, you, you guys do it a little bit differently. <laughs> Everything's made of brick uh, over here. So there's, there's, there's not yeah. much of it going on. But here it's fascinating. It's, you know, you're, you're, you'll start in the morning, whatever, 7 a.m., come 5 p.m. there's like half a house is up <laughs> you know it's it's just fascinating how uh it's a very rewarding job that you see you know um uh, like you see your your work really easily so i, I kind of fell in love with that but because we're an immigrant family um you know my parents wanted better for us and all that so i was like well i love building let me go to school for engineering so i went to school for civil engineering and um I just hated it. I hated it so much. And I started doing, I'm like, well, maybe, you know, the schooling sucks. Maybe like the actual job is cool. So then I started doing my internships, my third and fourth year, I started doing internships and it was even worse. It was even worse than the school. It's just, you know, you're sitting in the, uh, like a field trailer and you're just writing emails. Everybody's figuring out what they're going to have for lunch. Then you have lunch and then you write more emails and then you maybe go out and look and, 
you know, it's kind of you working with all the unions and things like that. And it's just, it was very, um, I didn't like it, I guess. So I ended up dropping out of school uh, uh, with one year left. So my parents weren't happy about that. Um, as you can imagine with all the student loans and everything. So I ended up dropping out and uh, getting into construction. Um, and it was more like general construction. I was still very young and I didn't have like the full scope of um, kind of knowledge that you need. But because I dropped out of school and I wanted to prove everybody that it, wrong, that I made a good decision, you know, I started kind of just hiring people. And I, like, I was just trying to get as many people as I could just so I, it looked good, you know, for my parents. Like, oh, I got five people working for me and all that stuff. Um, and that business like, like just imploded. It was so bad. It just, it went really well until like, I, it just didn't where I kind of got screwed over by somebody who knew how to screw somebody over, especially at a young age where I didn't have all my contracts in order and all that stuff. And I got the classic sue me, you know, uh, conversation. So that kind of imploded. So then I had to kind of start over from scratch. And, um, that's when I learned a lot from that mistake. And, uh, I was like, you know, instead of doing just the general construction stuff and kind of being taking on whatever jobs come our way, I'm going to focus on one thing. And for, for us, that was me and my wife, cause everybody basically left cause we had to let everybody go. Cause the thing just imploded. It was so fascinating. It was fascinating. Uh, how, how old, uh, how so old the, are you at, at this point when you've started your own this goes, yeah and then it goes it 24, goes 24 so i dropped out i was 23 to 24 i was um i guess yeah 23 when i started my own business um and then it imploded when i was like 26 so it was it did run for a couple of years um and we were doing great it's just like i just it's this one general contractor that we were doing this like three hundred thousand dollar job and I was just like, whoa, this huge project. This is like, this is it. Um, and basically I had to get, put all my resources towards that. That was the only job we were running. I had to hire extra people. I had to buy new equipment, do all this stuff. And then I got the, I'm not paying you, sue me. And that just, it kills you. You know, looking back at it, I should have had one crew that did whatever they could while I have other crews doing something else on other projects. So if one goes to shit, you have other, we can curse here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the whole, the whole point of this show over here is <laughs> we, 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 we say whatever on here, like the, the other, other types of podcasts. I always find it's very corporate and it's very like, Oh, you can say I this or that, whatever. Yeah. But for, for us, I mean, you know, Unilight's my business, you know, me via Unilight. And if you were to walk out there into the rest of the office, we say whatever we want to each other, as long as obviously everybody's respectful. But on here, you can say yeah. anything you want. So it's, you know, it's over over to you and you can curse as much as you need to. I don't curse a lot, but occasionally it slips. But <laughs> I don't curse a lot, but when I do, I do a fucking laugh. <laughs> I like that. Um, so, so, you know, looking back at it, I wish I diversified kind of the income a little bit because it was all kind of beholden to that and... Uh, that kind of imploded. So then start, we started over and all I had was my tools and um, kind of my tools left. And I, I was like, all right, I don't want to make that mistake. And I actually wanted to learn construction better because better. essentially with that, what turn, it turned into me just being a project manager and just putting out fires every morning, making sure everybody's doing whatever. And I didn't actually build. And uh, I think I enjoyed the building much more than I do the managing side of it. Um, and that's why I was like, all right, we're going to focus on one thing. And for us, it was the bathrooms. It was either bathrooms or kitchens. We were trying to figure out with my wife, which way we wanted to go. Um, kitchens, there's just so much logistical issues with that. Like you're relying on other people, cabinets and things like that. So we didn't really want to go that route. And we ended up doing a couple of bathrooms in a row and people just loved them. And then I loved it because you get to do so many things inside a bathroom. You get to do, you get to experience uh, plumbing, electrical, uh, drywall installation, painting, carpentry, finish work. Like, so you get to do a lot of things. So by the time you're sick of tiling, you're done, you know? So by the time like you're sick of painting a room, you're like, Hey, I'm done. 
Um, so I couldn't like, I know a lot of people say like, oh, you're the tile guy. I'm like, I love tiling. I love tiling bathrooms, especially showers. I just, I love tiling a shower because on its own, it's just like you walk in, you're like, holy shit, that's a sick shower. But if somebody was like, hey, can you go tile that like, you know, 400 square foot basement, I would say no, because that's just, that's just grunt work. And I don't, you know, want to do that. Um, so my wife and I, then we decided, all right, we're just going to stick with bathrooms and just be really, really good at them. So when our customers are like, Hey, can you help me like do a deck or something? We're like, no, we only do bathrooms to so be like, Whoa, that's cool. Like, you know, so in our, in our area, like really quickly, we became, um, like the top bathroom builder in our area just because of that. Cause no, literally there's not another person that just does bathrooms. Everybody does everything, you know? So we, um, we carved out this niche and right now we're booked into 2023. I think, um, February of 23, we're booked. And my phone, my phone literally says, we're not taking on any more work till 2023. And people are like, okay, thank you. Can you put us on that list? We're like, no, we're like, no, like, I just don't want to say, yeah. So we're, um, and so there's two models to business, I guess, for us, or like that, that I believe at least what I tell people is like, there's the, the, the Honda Civic or the Bentley model, you know? So we, we're definitely trying to go for the Bentley where we want to just do a better jobs, like do better quality work, but charge according to it. So we are by far, probably not by far, but like, we're probably the most expensive ones in the area as well, but we're booked because we do good work. And, you know, if I put up something that I don't like how it looks, I'll take it down and I'll start over. So like people see that and um, there are people who pay for quality you know, and, and what's funny is like at the top, at the top, I mean, like the top of quality, there's not a lot of competition. There really isn't like a lot of competition at the top. You just have to do a good job um, on the jobs themselves. I mean, one, one thing I find with a lot of trades people is I think 80% of trades people, they want to do a really good job and they really take care of the work. I think some of those people, which you've obviously found out from running this side of things and being more niche is that people will generally tend to pay for a better finish. But I do find from speaking to a lot of trades people, they worry about how much do I charge? Uh, should I charge this extra? I've had to do two extra trips to to Home Depot or to the wholesaler to go and collect materials. Do I charge for the fuel and my time to go and do this? But obviously it's refreshing to hear you say that people do pay for a better job to be done and not to be scared of that. I mean, like, I'll, I'll take you back to where you sort of, your business failed, because like, that's one thing that I really appreciate on here, because not many people talk about failures. You know, I have them every single day I walk into this office, every single day, like you say, that you're putting out fires and you think, gosh, I haven't got enough to, enough water to put all these fires out. Yeah. Um, but what, what, business advice then did you learn from that experience or what one bit of advice would you give to anybody that's listening or watching this now to sort of say well you know maybe don't expand too quick don't sort of be naive on contracts what would you what would you say you've learned from that and then maybe taken forward or what bit of advice would you give to other people listening and watching on that that respect so i think the two things that i still to this day um kind of reflect on that one is you have to know the trade itself whatever you're doing you as the i, I don't want to say the owner because i think you can be an owner as long as you have a good manager that can manage the crews and the, but that manager which what i was essentially like needs to know the trade you need to know if like this room should take you one day you know that because because you have done it in one day, right? So if you have employees that are doing that in five days, you know that something is off here. Where like, if you have, if you don't know the, you know, if you don't know the trade and you could think that five days is normal, you know? So like you, you could think that that's how long it should take. So for us, like I was just kind of, I was in a hiring mode without actually knowing what I needed to get or how people were performing, which is a mistake because you know, obviously it's a mistake for that. Um, that's one, two, the devil's in the details in terms of contracts and paperwork, no handshake deals, none of that stuff. Cause I basically had a $300,000 handshake deal. Like, all right, let's go. 
and then like you know he started getting the checks start checks started to come in and then on the last check after um basically all the inspections were passed it's not like we sucked like we did a good job we passed all the inspections and everything and the guy's like yeah i don't have the money for you sue me you know what i'm saying so i was like and, and I, I didn't have a contract with them i mean um, do, do you think that your age was partly to play maybe for the naivety in there or do you just think that because of obviously dropping out maybe of college or university thinking, well, I've got a point to prove here. So I just need to, I just need to crack on. Cause an another thing that I find with everybody we talk to, especially in the trades, they just want to be on the tools and using their hands. So the business sort of aspect of things sometimes gets a little bit overlooked. Would you say it was maybe the age or maybe a bit of business inexperience? It was, it was definitely, um, I think for me, it was insecurity. I was very insecure about dropping out uh, out of college. And like, mind you, like I had a company that I interned for like three times, three times in a row, already interned with them. They've already told me once I graduate, like you'll have $80,000 salary. Like, like we were ready to go with this company. Um, so it was that insecurity to prove my parents wrong that I wanted to basically be, I wanted to look like a boss before I was a boss, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just trying to, I guess, even for my friends, I was like, yeah, I, I'm a college, you know, I dropped out of college, but look how well I'm doing. I have nine guys working for me, you know, where in, in reality, like it's an absolute shit show. And I'm like literally scraping by just to get gas uh, because I, you know, I got into a wrong deal. So it was that I wish if I could go back, let's say I dropped out and I kind of, mastered the trade to the trade first and then scale it here i went for scale before i got the trade down itself um and now like thinking back like i wish i i went niche as well like if i if i had you know imagine i had nine guys working for me or with me doing bathrooms we would crush it but i was doing like drywall work and like so it wasn't uh too trying to do too many things i think it was too many things. And what happened is like, I got this one guy who was really good at drywall. So I was like, all right, I'll double down on his skill. So I was like, I'll just start taking on more drywall work. And, and then the guy left. And then like, I'm like, oh shit, I have all this drywall work that nobody has to, you know? So it was, I guess to answer your question, it was insecurity of me trying to just prove people wrong, I guess. And then I wish I just kind of went into a cave and, learn the trade myself and then and then multiply that yeah i mean so from from what i've sort of gathered from you saying that is maybe to anybody listening or watching is go out learn the trade learn those roles obviously contractors is probably one of the the hardest things because you have got so many different parts of the trade in there carpenters like you know, roofers, what, whatever, but like bricklayers, whatever it is, you've got to manage all those types of people. And like you say, unless you've done that job specifically and actually gone and learned a little bit about it, how can you expect to manage somebody that is doing that job? So, you know, lis listening to you there, it, it's, it's refreshing to hear somebody actually, A, admit that stuff doesn't go right, but then B, sort of say, well, looking back, I wish that they just got that experience because there's, there's so many younger apprentices or trades coming in and i think obviously the glory like the glorification really of instagram is oh yeah you know you get your tools and all of a sudden you're going to get a lamborghini which just yeah, yeah which just doesn't happen so it's it's really refreshing to hear you actually comment about that sort of side of things i i um i think the whole social media thing that kind of took off for us as well i think it, it has a lot to do with just my genuineness to be truthful about what happens on the job site and i mean some of my most viral videos are are me screwing up do you see that video of me putting in the hammer i, I did like yeah putting I, in did. The nail? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring that up later because it, it was one of those videos where the comments like we always talk about like algorithms the comments and just trolls and stuff like that but i mean it was probably one of the funniest videos i've actually seen without you really even trying to be funny it just sort of snowballed into it um, but I, I don't know whether you want to mention it just to give people context that are listening and watching what, what the video was, but I found it hilarious in the comments section. Yeah. I mean, essentially I was just trying to, so, um, spec ops, I met them at a local trade show here 
and I did their competition of like driving uh, nails into the wood. And I was like the top three guys. So like, I know, like I, I crushed it with I was like excited about that. So, and then they sent me a box of stuff and I was like, all right, let me like make a video for them. So I wanted to do one that showed the, the magnet feature under a hammer. And then I did it three times where like I put it up there and I put the nails in and it's kind of boring. And then I was like, all right, like, so I was just trying to figure out like a better way to do it. So that was not my first take. I already did like three of those and they all went fine. And they like, and then like, I went to put this one in and the nail bent. And it's like, we're all like, you know, it's yeah, the nail bent. And I was like, there's something here. I'm just going to go with it. And then I missed it. And I'm like, this is hilarious. And then I just like, this. so like I knew um, you, you people like that was a uh, comment, like a gold mine because people either understand that that's like, funny or people are like what the hell is happening here why is this like online online and like i do get a lot of trolls and i'll i'll use them to my advantage in my um uh, like i'll give them meat to chew essentially just so they can't they chew they chew out. they chewed on that one a lot especially especially yeah, as the more you smacked it the more it just bent which to be fair everybody who's ever hammered anything you know nobody ever hammers a nail in perfect every single time let's be serious I don't know, but usually the nail bends, you take it out, you put a new nail in and you drive it in. But here I was just like, this is funny. And then I start missing it on purpose, kind of around it. It's, I don't know, it was a hilarious video. So then I was with Alex um, about to post it. And I'm like, so I had the good video where I just, you know, showed off or whatever. I'm like the good video. And then that video, I'm like, we're going with this one. Cause it's funny. Cause I, I, I watch Alex when I'm like, I'll show him the video. I like, I watch his eyes and then I'm like, that video he cracked up he's like this is hilarious and i'm like let's go with this one so it was you know and then for that brand for um spec ops i think that video has over 10 million views across all platforms probably more like close to 20 uh across all the, all the platforms which is you know you can't the, yeah you, you can't put a, pr funny, a like, price on, uh, on good publicity i um you know it, to me, like the, with my social media stuff, like I can only do it because I'm having fun with it. And then like, if I'm not, I'll, I'll usually take a couple of days off and break and then like kind of get back to it um, because people can see right through that. I feel like um, if you're being genuine or, or, or not, but a lot of times I'll like even put a misspelling on the screen just so people then the know-it-alls will go into the comments and they'll like, they'll, you know, or if I say, um, these floor, uh, instead of floor rafters or something or floor, um, joists, I'll say like, oh, these floor studs, we're going to level out these floor studs. And then everybody's like, those are not studs. Those are rafters. I'm like, thank you. Like, there's yeah, so, there's so, there's I don't so, really, I think that comes with the territory. I mean, I'll take, I'll take you back then. I mean, obviously you've, 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 you've had the issues with the business and then you decide to go more niche, uh, yourself and your wife. Is it, is it just the two of you still now or is it? It's my, and, and Alex. So Alex has been with us for three years now, going on four years and three years. And it's like, it's just the perfect fit. He's young. He had zero construction experience. And um, it's just exactly, it's, he wants to learn. He's a, like, like we usually start at eight. He's at the job site at seven twenty. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, so he's always there. And like, I, I really do believe like, even if you are like a solo person, you need to have some type of helper just to, um, one, make it easier for you in terms of like physically, like if you have to pick something up, you need to, you know, like it'll give you, um, just a healthier kind of work situation where you're not just working your ass off um and you have that second hand two is just more fun to work with somebody on a job site because i know a lot of people listening probably just it's just them them and like a brush if they're a painter or you know if they're a tile setter they're just by themselves um and also it looks better for the company like for us like there's somebody at the job site eight o'clock every morning while i make my runs i gotta get this i gotta get that i got i get to the job site at, at 11 let's say or 10 Alex has already done the prep. He's there. So the customer feels good as if they're like, somebody's just there for eight, yeah, eight hours a day. Somebody's there. Cause if you show up at like 11, you know, you don't go to your customer and like, oh, so I had to go to this place, this place, this place, and this way. That's why I'm late. You know, you don't do that. You just kind of walk in, you do your thing. And, and then they're like, are you on a different job site? So it's like, 
Yeah, like um, it's just I. Uh, so it's just myself and Alex and Catherine. She does. I mean, she does so much. She uh, does all the design work, so all the 3D renderings and all of that stuff, and and then all the communication and scheduling on the back end, and. I think that's one of our superpowers for our business is just that we over communicate with the customers like the job that we're doing right now they're overseas like i've only seen them once and literally every day we're sending them off emails pictures updates things are coming in things are going out and um they love it like so they're they they feel really good about about that yeah i think for anybody listening and watching to this as well is we've we've you've had the two sides there where you've said you know, I had more people and it was more difficult, which, you know, increasing any sort of workforce and having to look after more people is more difficult. But then you've also shown the benefit of having a smaller, tight knit team with people that you can rely on. I mean, where where in this process then did the idea for the social media sort of side of things come? Like how far down into the new venture did you suddenly go, I'm just going to start sticking? And which which social media channel was your first? Which Which one did you sort so, of test it out on first? So that is like the reason we started social media was kind of doubling down on what I was just saying. It was like we wanted to look more professional and we wanted to have an online presence. So when somebody Googled Winnie Designs, we came up because, you know, a big issue, not a big issue, but like a big thing that I see is like if you don't have any online presence and somebody Googles you or looks you up and you don't show up, that's sketchy. Um, <laughs> so right. we were like, all right, so we'll start our social media pages and just kind of go from there um and then i listen to a lot of gary v i don't know if you yeah yeah know gary, gary v. Yeah. He's, so he's everywhere I, um, especially on tiktok that guy he's everywhere yeah so, so he's everywhere and i um i got onto a podcast with him and i have like a 17 minute conversation with him and um just kind of i talked about how um like right now like deep inside i believe that like we have something um or that i have something where um I can be great and like I not to sound cocky and like please like give give me like a break on on that like I believe that like if if I set my mind towards something I can do something like amazing in this world but I have two young kids right now they're five years old and two years old um that I want to focus on and uh, if I wanted to build this massive brand and massive construction company I know that I would have had to sacrifice on my kids time. So I chose to go niche, go, go smaller. Um, and just basically, I mean, I'm, I, I leave work at three o'clock and I'm home to get my kids. Like when they come home from school right now or daycare, we hang out. I, you know, we make dinner, go to sleep, all that stuff. So like put them to sleep. So like, I'm definitely a present dad. Um, but I still have that inside of me that like kind of the drive to do something amazing and great. And when I was kind of talking with Gary Vee, he's like, do social media because you can do that at night. I'm like, shit, you're right. So then I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm gonna like, give it a try on social media. And um, he was pushing TikTok a lot two years ago. And that was two years ago. Um, so he's pushing TikTok. I'm like, I'll, I'll give TikTok a try. And then he's like, you got to post 15 times a day. I'm like, I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll post 15 times a day. So then I, I would post and then um, things would just kind of take off from there. So we started on TikTok and um, essentially with that, like it's super, I mean, people overthink how to grow on social media. Like you have to just put the work in essentially. Like there's really no other way to go. Or, like there's no, you know, people will DM me like, how do I grow? Like, I don't know, like, like, you know, create like, content like, and then do, and then put it out. <laughs> yes. So basically I would make, you know, 10 to 15 pieces of content a day. And it would be the stupidest things. It would be the very simple things. Um, and I would do that on TikTok and just post them. And out of those 10, 15 that I would post a day, like three or four would do great. You're like, oh shit, like those did good. Okay. So then tomorrow you kind of do more of the videos, like those three or four. Right. So like you see that the ones where you were like eating pizza, nobody really cared about. It's like, all right, maybe like not not too many videos like that. But then like if somebody sees like, oh, if you're showing them how to do something, they're into it. So then you do more videos of how to do things. So then we start doubling down on those. And then like now that, you know, after doing that for six months, essentially we did for six months, 
we were just kind of growing and figuring out how to do it, um, we figured out the videos that people wanted to see essentially and that I enjoyed making. And uh, now you don't have to post 15 times a day. You just have to post three or four because you know the good videos are going to go. And then out of those three or four, you kind of know which ones might go viral. And then out of that, there's a serendipity of like just posting at the right time and enough people saw it to kind of push it to that next level. And then it just takes off. Um, we've had videos where we just reposted old videos that did bad at a better time and they would take off. So it's, you know, a lot of it is kind of almost getting lucky a little bit that there's a trend that kind of takes off a little bit, but you have to post them out there to be lucky about. Um, so that's, so we started on TikTok essentially two years ago. That's, that was our first platform. I have many conversations and I always, especially in the comments, I get a load of people saying to me, like, all you ever do is talk about social media or you only get people on from social media. And I'm thinking, well, all these interesting people that we have on the show as guests, we wouldn't really get to understand them or see them or hear about them if it wasn't for social media. But obviously you just mentioned to me, so two two years ago, we got Gary V to thank for your social media rampage, I should call it, because you've absolutely smashed it. Um, t two years. So for, for I know obviously we've had COVID and the pandemic as well, which people spend more time on the phone, but just, you know, I always try to say to anybody that's listening or watching to, to this show is the importance of social media. And again, almost like you've had that life lesson of the failure of the business. Can you just try to explain to anybody, especially people starting out, like just how useful at all social media can be? I mean, you know, now you're working with brands, you get to go to brand events, like just from even that side of things or getting sent new cool products to test or to review, you know, just how has it changed what you do and like, has it made it more enjoyable? What types of things do you get to experience? Just not sell it to somebody, but just give somebody a glimpse of the types of experiences they, they can get if they utilize social media in the right way. So I, I think there's two conversations to have for that. There's one of like how to become a social media influencer. That's completely different than if you have a business and you just want to have a social media presence so that your customers could look you up. That's like, it's completely like, you do not need to post 15 times a day. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you want people to just why, why, be able to find you. Why did Gary V say 15 times a day? Cause I've never heard anybody say 15 times a day. I think one is just, he's trying to sh basically say that like, it takes a lot of work. You know, and then when people are like, oh, I post once a week or like, oh, I just post my like, my like flex projects. He's basically saying the 15 times a day just to basically almost mock them. It's like it's not even close to what you need. Um, essentially, 15 times a day posting. And at the, today it's a little bit different because especially on TikTok, if you were to go on TikTok and I was to coach you through how to grow on there, like I would not say post 15 times a day because at this point there's a lot of content out there like three or four better ones is better today. Even use your own filter and your own judgment. Um, it's better today to post three or four and kind of, and study, but you have to study them. You can't just like post them and be like, oh, it didn't work. Okay. If people didn't, you know. Have you thought about actually doing some courses or teaching people about ways to improve? Yeah. Yourself? I mean, when people, when people DM me, like I'm, I, I've helped a lot of even other creators just, I mean, I, I mean, I can tell everybody what I do now. Like it's, it's really not that hard. I think it's just literally work. And if I tell people every day, I put a five to six hours of work into social media every day, you know, and right now when I'm trying to do my vlog, um, I'm doing a daily vlog that I just started last week. And now I'm basically editing a video, a YouTube video every single day. I'm editing a YouTube video. So that's even more work, but I see what I'm trying to get out of it. So I'm okay with that. Um, it's just people don't want to take on another job, but they all want to kind of like get free shit and they want to get, you know, paid for posts and stuff like, I'm like, you don't earn that yet. You haven't like, so I treated it as a job before it became quote unquote job. Um, I put, the, I put the work in essentially. Um, so, th so there's, there's the two parts, I guess, like, so I, I was saying like, if you just want to have, I guess there's 
there's like three types of accounts you could have. One is just literally, it's your um, like resume. It's like, here's our cool projects. Here's what we do. If you want to see our previous jobs, check out our Instagram. You have like 500 to a thousand followers, 1500 followers. And they just, you know, you literally just send your customers there to see what you can do. Then there's that next kind of bucket of people between like 5,000 followers and like 30,000 followers. And that's kind of your expert like area where you can say like, I'm an expert in tiling installation. So then when people look you up, you come up, you know, like you, that you come up as the guy who's really good at tiling, the guy who, or a girl who's really good at carpentry. Um, you come up that way and then you can start positioning yourself as an expert. And those are the, um, that's the area where you can then start getting free products and testing things out because you're the expert. Right. Um, and if, in the, you know, if you go into a niche, it's easier to do that in terms of like, you know, if you want to break out in a basket weaving niche, you probably need like 3000 followers. And now you're one of the biggest ones because it's, it's a, it's more of a niche. Uh, but if you're trying to just break out in construction in general, it's going to be much harder because there's more, more people on that. Um, and then there's after that, it obviously is when you can become the quote unquote influencer um, where you have, you know, a couple million followers and all that kind of work. And that's, um, the game changes at that point because now you're started to see like shit, like there's something there that's outside of construction. So um, your almost business plan changes now because of that. And the other two, no, you're still doing, you know, 10 hours of work, nine hours of work on construction. And then occasionally you're putting in a couple of videos out there. Um, but if you're kind of break out into that, like, one percent of the accounts that's when your your math kind of starts to change and you're like you can make other decisions i guess like on that way yeah yeah i mean your your story and your sort of prominence on tiktok and how quickly that's grown reminds me of uh a bit like ryan sq2 over here was obviously he's yeah, he blown did. he's blown up on tiktok and then i think everybody loves his daily sort of all right, I'm from London, you know, all that sort of stuff on his videos and he's, uh, you know, he's very frank in his conversation. So, you know, the, the thing that I've sort of noticed with a few people that have really blown up in, in recent years, it's all started on TikTok. Because again, me as a brand, this is talking from my own perspective, was TikTok, I overlooked it because I just thought it was kids dancing. I'll be really honest with you. I was just like, I, I can't, I can't deal with this. Whereas Instagram, I found that it was like there was a good community on there. Everybody supported each other. It was like slightly more professional. But actually, now we've started on our TikTok journey, where I think the brand's got about ten thousand followers now. So we're we're we're, we're going to hopefully catch you one day. Um, but you know, just where where would somebody start then? Who's literally never done anything on social media where would you say is is a good place to start for somebody which which platform or do you just think just get yourself on any platform and start you know putting yourself with what goal with what with what goal uh, what's the goal i think most people they start social media is just they they have an account and then what ends up happening i think as it grows it changes like for us as a business i just thought well we've got to be on there because everybody's on there and then what's actually started to happen over the years was I've realized this is actually a really good tool to to hit my customer directly in one quick post. So there's no distributor in between. There's me talking to my customer like like that. Yeah. And it's brought me a lot closer to not just my customer, but to the trade community, to being involved in things, in conversations, in things that I normally wouldn't as a brand have got to see and I've got to watch people like yourself working and thinking hold on a minute they're up there on a ladder and they're doing this if I make something that can just go there then I've seen 12 people today just doing that same job and I could potentially make a product that makes somebody's life easier so that's for us it changed like that but obviously you know when you're probably an influencer you probably start and you think well you know, I just started my channel because I like to put stuff out there and I like to give tips and tricks to people and then it changes into something else. So I don't know whether when you first started, you just thought, oh, I'm going to go TikTok because that's the the latest one or was there a particular yeah, reason? So the, the, I started on, started on TikTok. It was literally because of the 
conversation I had with Gary V. He's like, TikTok is the future. You got to go on there. It's the best and fastest growing organic reach that you could get out there. He and wasn't. Then, he wasn't wrong though. Mind, was he? <laughs> he wasn't wrong. No, and, and in my mind, I'm like, he knows more than me. I'm like, okay, you know. So, so like, why would I question that? So then I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So then we started blowing up on on TikTok, and uh, and then I started looking at my Instagram. And I'm like, damn, this looks pathetic. You know, we have like 1.5 million followers on TikTok or something. Or like, I think we had a million. No, hold on. I think we had like 700,000 because I know we hit a hundred on, we hit a million on TikTok, a hundred on Instagram at the same like week. I remember that was like a giveaway. Um, So I I was like, we were like 750. I'm like, our Instagram just looks whack. I'm like, okay, let me just kind of focus a little bit on that. And then the things I learned on TikTok, I just brought over to Instagram and just blew up and it's literally all organic and What's nice is because of all the videos I posted on TikTok, I already did the filter. I already filtered out the bad videos. So I just took the good videos that blew up on there, reposted them. It's not like it's not different content. It's literally the same content. I have all the videos saved on my phone. All of the, so everything that's happened last two years happened right here. Like I don't I don't use different cameras or anything like that. It's all with my phone. Um, even the YouTube videos that I do right now, I just shoot on my phone and I edit it on my phone and then I put it out. So like, I don't overcomplicate that process. A lot of people will overcomplicate like with gear and all this stuff. I'm like, you know, you're building a nice house in the middle of the woods, essentially. Nobody cares about you. Like, so like you don't like just start. And then like, if you want to like get better equipment, I guess, but the iPhone like 12, whatever, it's nicer than half of the cameras out there. So um, I guess if you're making like bird flying content you probably need a better lens but like in the bathroom or a construction site you know like you're really unnecessary so so we did that and then our instagram looked pathetic so we're like all right let's do instagram that blew up and then i was like shit like our youtube looks bad now next to instagram and tiktok so i'm like all right like let's just do it youtube and then that blew up and then i'm like damn i think facebook is starting their new uh new reels as well i'm like all right i'll just post on facebook and now we have four hundred twenty thousand on facebook in the last four months i think we grew that um so you learn that it's kind of like playing soccer or football right like playing you know how to play the game and then you just go to different teams you can kind of pick out you it's so the the mindset that you have to have is essentially short videos are king right now Everybody wants to compete with TikTok. That's why if you know how to do TikTok, you can know how to do all of the other ones because all the other ones right now are trying to compete with TikTok. So if you can figure out how to post good TikTok videos that go viral and all that stuff, just take those same videos and upload them on the other platforms. But you have to edit them inside those platforms. Don't edit. So like I always have the same raw video. So even if my text You want to use the text from Instagram, the text from Facebook, the text from YouTube, because they notice that and then they push, push, push that out. Um, And now, now, now that we have like these four stools, we can post a video and usually goes viral somewhere. Like, I'm not sure why or where, but like now that we have the four platforms, um, so I don't know if I answered your question. I think I just kind of ran. No, um, I, I, what, what I try to do, and some people sort of go, where's he leading with this question is, I just, even if one person listens to this or watches it and picks up on that, especially the one thing that you've just said about editing in those specific platforms, like one of the things we had a, a, a girl on who is a female bricklayer called Darcy Rattle Kings, and her TikTok account was like, it, when she came in, it was it was just going like this. And she said, you've got to edit inside. You've got to use the filters. You've got to use the text, yeah. use, a, use a sound that's trending, all that type of stuff. And up until that point, we were doing TikTok videos and they were getting like 100 views. And then we did one with her in here and he got 10,500. And we were all like, oh man, we've made it. But it's, it's little bits of information. So I try to extract like little bits of knowledge from people or uh, stuff about their experiences that they've done just so people can learn something from the podcast. Cause I just think too many people do podcasts and it's just a chat about things and, Oh yeah. You know, like tell us all the great things in your life. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, trying to extract a bit of, bit of knowledge from people that obviously have done, done good things, great things. That's why they're on here. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing with any one of these videos that, that, that put out is 
the first five seconds. Um, it's just that hook, you know, if you have a, like a good hook, then it will go viral um, or like it will get pushed. Essentially how these platforms work is like you post the video, a hundred people see it. And then the algorithm will see how many of those hundred liked it. Cool. A certain amount liked it. Let's show this now to a thousand people. Okay. The trend is continuing a thousand people. This certain amount of them liked it. Let's push it to a hundred thousand. And then, so it's these little tiers that you have to break through. And then like, it just goes viral. Um, and then like once it kind of passes those filters, then it goes to the big one. So it, it's very important to do the hook. And that's why usually um, I'll start with the end almost. It's like today I'm going to show you how to do this or like, let me show you why this thing sucks. And then you explain it. Don't explain it and then say, and that's why this sucks. So it's, it's always the hook first. Um, and then um, that's where I, I'll spend more time on that first 10 seconds of the video than I do on like the, the other portions, obviously, just because if somebody doesn't even want to spend 10 seconds on it, then they, they just won't f watch it. And if they're not watching a certain amount of it, then it just never gets pushed. Um, so but that's something, again, like, yeah, you study it. My favorite one of those is watch until the end on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so clickbaity. But no, I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's great to listen to your experiences, the progress, how you've got to here. I mean, those, if for anybody listening or watching to this, like those little tiny nuggets of information you've di just dished out, like there's a couple of bits in there that I didn't know. So I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to take them and run with them as well. So thank you for them. But And then, and then sometimes people will say like, so there's the trending songs. There's like the top 10 trending songs. And 99% of the time, like that's the song that you have to go with. Even if you hate it, you know, like it's trend. It's literally trending because people are watching. It's like, you know, it's not like there's somebody from TikTok who's like, I like this song. It's like, it's literally just, that's what people are watching. Those are the sounds that are being used. So you usually go with those. But if you're making a video and it's like doing something in New York and you see like, let's say the New York backdrop, you use a Frank Sinatra video because that will go viral because that's so as much as you want to like use the trending sounds, if there's something that just fits really, really well with your video, you go with that because at the end of the day, using the right trending sound will maybe account for 5% of the 5% of that algorithm. But the right song will have people watching it longer. Um, so the sounds are very important. I will use a lot of things like most people don't know this or 99% um, of contractors or this is the right way or this is my favorite way. So like when you say things like that, those are hooks, right? So it's that hook is just very, very important. Um, and I think so, so to go back to what you were saying uh, with social media and brands, I think the position like because I um, consult with some brands right now. Um, and what, what I always tell them is like, it's an amazing opportunity to build your brand culture. You don't leave it out to essentially the consumers. Because a lot of times, old, older times, it's like basically when things go out, people then create the content and people do all that stuff for you. And the culture is built by the consumers. Where for you guys, you can dictate that culture. So with Unilite, you guys can literally be the, the fun, you know, flashlight company or whatever it is, or, you know, fun tool company. And you guys can uh, kind of break out. So people would almost see that, oh, you guys are the company who did that video because it's like a, um, you know, it's like Red Bull, like half of the people don't know Red Bull because of their drink, but they know it because of their Red Bull racing team and because of the soccer team and because of the guy jumping out of space, you know? So it's that kind of stuff. So if I had like, a brand myself, it's just something that we're working on. Like that's what I'm going to be um, focusing on is just kind of building the culture by yourself of what you want people to essentially perceive you as that. I mean, what we do round about this time, Winnie, is obviously I've, I've had you on the phone for quite some time. So I'm, I'm conscious of taking up too much of your time. Um, we normally do sort of almost like a Jerry Springer final thought type of thing where you can talk to us about future plans or if you've got any advice for people listening or watching or you want to shamelessly plug your social media channels, which I don't think you need to do, but, you know, brand brand is everything, yeah. as they say. But, you know, any anything that you want to sort of convey to people that are listening or watching to the show that you, you, you might we might not have brushed on or we might not have talked about, 
Is there anything there from your side? Yeah. I think the the biggest thing is that it's not as hard as it looks, is what what I would want to say to people. It's like all all of this stuff, like literally anything, like the social media, it's like, okay, all you have to do is just put five hours of work in. Like, and it's not a hard work. I'm not telling you to like solve like algorithms or like, you know, uh, um, geometric equations or something. You just have to put the work in to do this stuff. Same thing with bathroom building and construction. Put the work in and like learn the trade. Like um that's that's the biggest one. And um for for me as a as a future of what I want to do, like I think we are going to like double down on social media. The the thing that I'm over the next like five years want to do is basically be the Gordon Ramsay of construction. That's my kind of like future plan. Is like I, I want to build for the rest of my life. Like I want to build houses. I want to like flip houses, build Airbnbs, build giveaway houses, that kind of stuff. But obviously, um, just kind of make construction more fun. A lot of this stuff is a lot of know-it-alls and um, kind of people talking down at people almost. Like, a lot of bullshit. It, it is so much bullshit with this. And people make it almost, people almost make it like so hard to like, they make it, sound harder than it actually is or something they try to almost make it more intellectual where it's like the videos that i make i just uh maybe it's because i'm not like school trained on construction so i just use simple like language and i don't overcomplicate it um that's why like they relate they're relatable but so that's kind of my goal and my wife and i are like we're about to buy a house and we're going to be flipping like not flipping it, we're going to be living in it but we're going to be renovating all the rooms in it as well and i want to focus on this vlog that i'm starting um because i can see like even with tv shows like we've been approached like from, from a couple of channels and we just never wanted to go down the tv route because it's just like you usually do tv to get the views but we already have the views so now we have to figure out like how to almost get the show on our by ourselves um so we're gonna go with uh, the vlogging and i want to kind of start mastering this uh longer form content and going back to the thing i was saying about the short form content is i'm posting one video a day right now on youtube which is super aggressive like usually it's one a week max people will do so then i'll do one a day just so i can learn faster um this way you know three months from now, I'll have almost a hundred videos that I can look at and see what worked, what didn't work and then kind of do more of that. But if I did that, you know, one a week, we're only at 12 videos. So it's just the sample size has to be bigger. Um, so that's I mean, kind of what we have for our future. One thing, one thing I just want to interrupt in there is from m me sitting here talking to you, obviously like you've, you've moved to a foreign country, age 12, you've had some, you know, stumbling blocks along the way. But then, like, one thing listening to you is you're, you're relentless. So, that, you know, when people say, oh, I haven't got enough time or I can't do this or I don't know where to start with this, obviously, like, the, the one thing I get from you is you find it easy because you've, you've, you've not mastered it, you've put the work in. So now it becomes, it becomes second nature to you. And the one thing that I want to try and stress to anybody that's listening or watching to this, because they'll all be like, how'd you do it? How'd you make the channel grow? You'll still get those messages even after this show is just take your time, but just put the effort in whatever you do. And that's one, one thing that everybody that we have on this show, especially listening to you that I've sort of gathered from our, our conversation today is you just got to put the effort in. And like you said, five hours a day, some people go, I'm working for eight. How do I put five hours a day in? Well, when you come home, you have to sit on the sofa. You know, you yeah. have to you have to sit at your desk and just just do it. And then eventually you get to a point where actually it becomes second nature. So you get quicker at it. You know? Yeah, it, it's it's um you know, if you don't want to do it, then like don't ask for the reward. It's one of those things. It's like it's fine not to, right? Not everybody wants should be or like a social media influence. And that's what I want to like stress is like like I would rather want to help the 95% or 99% of people who are literally listening to just not become social media influencers, but more of just having a good account. I think what I would do if I was, let's say, still had like 10,000 followers and things like that, I would use that. I would be very heavy in my stories. So when that potential customer that you just sent a proposal to and you tell them, follow our Instagram, check out our stories, they get to see what you are like on a construction site. They get to see if you're a dick. They get to see if you're, 
you know, who you are and how you take care of the house, how do you take care of the project? And um, you can get better jobs, I believe that way, uh, just to basically have this almost live resume of what you're doing, what you're doing. Um, and then with brands, like same thing, I just stress, it's like, it's almost in today's world where everything is so huge, you have your Amazons and Apples and all these massive conglomerates, the people who will break out are the people who go super, super raw and super, super authentic. If you guys just got a bad shipment of stuff, right? And you see it, like most people will just, okay, like, all right, that's a bad box. We're going to send that back. I would make so much content around that. I would say like, we just got a bad box of these flashlights or, or these lights. What are we going to do? We're going to throw them out because we're take care of our, you know, so like you spin the mistake into something that build, build, builds your culture of like, no, like we won't take this, you know, where like same thing with our mistakes. I'll, I'll show like, hey, we chipped our tile. We're going to take it out. People are like, that's amazing. Like um, is people can see through the bullshit, I think. And in today's world where there's so much content out there and uh, the people who are raw and authentic. And that's why I wanted to highlight that my phone is literally all I use because if you have too much stuff, you over, over complicate things. And I don't mean you guys, you have a podcast and all that set up, but like I'm saying, if you're on a construction site, you don't need boom mics and lights and all this other stuff. Like, you know, if you have a decent light, a Unilight, if you want to put into a corner a or something, plug, that right? Was. That was a good plug. <laughs> <laughs> Link in bio, guys. Link in bio. Other um, lights are available. <laughs> <laughs> um, that and then the phone and that's it. Um, there's really don't overcomplicate it because people like the raw content right now. And I think that's why TikTok is absolutely destroying everybody else. It's because if you watch TikTok, it's just authentic content. And if you watch Instagram or something like that, it's more of, polished because that's what they wanted they wanted people to have these perfect instagram pictures perfect instagram videos and posts and people are just sick of it i feel like especially after covid they're like don't like come at me and just show me what it really is um, yeah no fantastic i mean just for me personally like th there's not many Everybody that we have on as a guest, I always find interesting because their backstory, like obviously you mentioned that you, that you moved to a different country. I love all that sort of stuff. But there's the odd odd person that I get on where I get a little bit of information where even I'm getting educated. So, you know, from, from me personally, the stuff about TikTok and stories and stuff like that, like I've been absorbing that information because it's, it's, it's priceless for me. So big thank you from that side. Again, apologies, Pete's not here. So you yeah, know, he's, 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 he had one job. <laughs> <laughs> he had one. He had one job. But um, big, big thanks for taking your time out because I know when you when you're busy and whatever, and people want a piece of your time. And just again for anybody listening or watching, just you know, be appreciative of like if you come back with a, a message in the DMs and stuff like that. Like you know, I can't describe how many we get as a brand. And then when you've got the level of following that you have, like if anybody takes time out to just give that information up just appreciate those people because there's not many of them so big thanks from me winnie for uh you know dropping in and hopefully people actually listen to this and they just they suck up and hoover all that information because it was it was fantastic talking to you so uh big thank you from me hopefully when i get myself You're over welcome. to the to the us we'll come and visit you and shove a camera in your face and follow you around for a little bit as well so <laughs> there you go yeah all right sounds good no worries thank thanks very much for coming on the podcast mate